Is Christopher Nolan's Tenet any good? I don't think so. And I'm going to explain why I this is the first Christopher Nolan movie I have not liked at all. Wait for it, coming up next. <laughs> Tenet is released September 2020. This is during the coronavirus pandemic, and I think a lot of people are very excited about this movie. There have been no summer blockbusters this year, and as I've read around the internet now, a lot of critics have really liked this movie. A lot of viewers have. It's getting 85% on the tomato meter right now, although we'll see what happens when a lot of people go to see it. By my count, this is Nolan's 11th feature film, although perhaps it's his 10th if you don't count his first low-budget movie following, and thus you get a lot of puns, Tenet, his 10th or 11th movie. And you see that Tenet is a palindrome. It's the same forwards and backwards. That goes along with the major idea in the movie, which is time travel, things from the future coming back to the past, and a lot of backwards action in this movie. It's probably the highlight of the movie for most people, the special effects with the backward or time travel action. And I figure Tenet is a summation of Nolan's career, all the 10 movies before it. It sort of does have a lot of stuff from those other movies, there are a lot of masked characters, for example, which he likes to use. A lot of exposition and really rigid logical boundaries in a world that's incomprehensible, but I guess makes some kind of sense in the movie world. And there is some overlap with one of his most beloved movies, for whatever reason, Inception. A movie that I don't even know what that movie's about. I find it wildly entertaining. I think it's about corporate espionage or mind control, but not really. It's just an entertaining spectacle. I think Tenet tries to be an entertaining spectacle, but for me it fails for a lot of reasons. First, the movie has a lot of Nolan trappings, and I think a lot of his bad habits show up here. A lot of exposition in this movie, needless exposition. He needs to show more rather than tell. I was always under the impression he likes visual directors, but here in this movie, you get a lot and a lot of talking, and most of the talking explains nothing. I mean, you will walk out of the theater. I dare say most people walk out of the theater not really even being able to even understand this movie or summarize the plot. In fact, when I went home, my wife asked me, what was the movie about? I was like, I don't even know. It's two spies. They're trying to take out a Russian oligarch who is sending weapons from the future into the past, and somehow he's rigged things up so that if he dies, the world ends in some kind of nuclear explosion. The two spies are trying to get, a, a later in the movie, a case of plutonium. Uh, but that's about it. I mean, it, there's a lot of other stuff in the movie. And yet, I don't think most viewers will frankly be able to understand what's going on in this movie. Making things worse, you get a lot of masked characters in this movie. And for various reasons, a lot of it because of the soundtrack, it's not really music, it's a lot of noise, you can't hear what they're saying. At least I couldn't in the theater. I was the only person in the theater. And I was and I was sitting up front and I was having a very difficult time even hearing what they were saying. I, and I don't see any reason why the movie would even have that in it. Why you would have characters who are talking but you can't hear them. Now if you doubt me, I like a lot of modernism. I like Godard, I like Tarkovsky. I think I can understand them reasonably well. I read a lot of modernist literature, some of which I like a lot, and I understand very complex text. I'm a university professor after all. I come out of Tenet and I'm like, I think this is just about cool time travel special effects. That is the highlight of the movie. Lots of gun violence in this movie, and you see bullets go in reverse, you see buildings, you know, rebuild themselves. The movie calls this inverted entropy, and it uses that Star Trek techno babble to get away with the fact that it's just a time travel movie with all the paradoxes and contradictions you've seen if you've ever seen any time travel movie or read any time travel story. Now, I could criticize this movie for having no heart. The main character is an empty protagonist. He has no background, sort of like the Joker in The Dark Knight. We don't know who he's fighting for, what he's fighting for, who he is, where he came from, nothing. And then that's basically the case with everybody else in the movie. The movie, though, wants us to care about the characters. That's what's strange. The movie should just abandon characterization altogether. It basically does. Every character in this movie is flat, and yet it asks us to care about the relationship between the protagonist and a woman who is the wife of the Russian oligarch, and she's abused and, and mistreated by him. 
Why should we care about these characters, though? I came out of the movie having no desire to, even during the middle of the movie, no desire to care about anything because I didn't know what was at stake, what was the big problem, who was doing anything in this movie. And I think, I, I really believe this, a lot of viewers will be in this movie and turn to the person next to them and go, what's happening here? Who are these people? I could not even tell you one of the names of the characters. I have to go look it up on the internet. That's how you know impersonal this movie is. And yet, as I said, it wants us to care about the characters. So maybe it should have gone for just spectacle or just pure gun violence and time travel violence or whatever it's trying to do special effects wise and sound wise, which, you know, for Nolan, usually those are the highlights of the movie, but he's always got emotional characters at the core. You think about Interstellar and the Matthew McConaughey character and his daughter and they're separated and they have a relationship that he wants to get back home, for example happens in inception too as well so i don't think that nolan is trying to you know get away with you know no plot no characters just a movie spectacle i think the movie then fails at what it's trying to do now i'm a science fiction nerd or maybe even you would call me an aficionado you know i've read a lot of science fiction stories and unfortunately tenant does not advance on time travel stories from you know 80 years ago it even references the grandfather paradox or famous paradox for time travel thinking but it doesn't do anything that a story from the 1930s or even hg wells could do or knew about and that's what's troubling to me i do think that if viewers if they've never seen a time travel movie they'll probably be awed by this movie they'll probably be oh this is amazing it's very clever and some of the babble in this movie sounds pretty interesting and sort of quasi philosophical and yet you know if you're older like me and you've seen a lot of time travel movies I don't think this movie is going to satisfy your need to, you know, do something more with time travel. It does all the same things, the paradoxes between free will and cause and effect. And then it talks on and on and on about cause and effect. But this is the key to me. There is one line in the movie where a character goes to the main, says to the main character, just don't understand it, feel it. <laughs> and so you're supposed to just feel the movie. The problem is the characters just keep trying to tell us and trying to give us some understanding about what's going on. So we're not able to feel or understand this movie, I think. Much better time travel movies. I even recommended to a science fiction class the day I watched Tenet later that night. The day of, of watching it, I recommended to them Live, Die, Repeat, which is just a fun military science fiction action movie. You know, Tom Cruise, it's got a lot of logic problems, but it's a science fiction spectacle, you know, that's pretty fun. Primer by Shane Carruth. Now that's a low budget movie, 80 minutes, and it's doing all of the things even more that Tenet wants to do with time travel. And yet I find Primer is still a fun, really fun movie to watch, really engaging in a crazy third act. So instead of going to uh, Tenet and seeing it for two and a half hours and not knowing what's going on, just watch Primer. I mean, I think it's available on the internet. I think you'll enjoy that a lot better than this movie. All this is to say, this is really unfortunate. I like Christopher Nolan, unlike some critics who just bash him repeatedly for his errors or his sins. Yeah, he's got bad editing, sometimes sloppy editing, too much exposition, too many shots sometimes. But it's all for the sake of populist entertainment. And sometimes, you know, I'm fine with that. I like the Dark Knight trilogy a lot. Inception's fun. And so Interstellar is all right. So I think this movie, uh, you know, Tenet could have been so much better, but it wants to rehash Memento and Inception, as I said. And it's a spy movie that doesn't really understand the whole s scope of the spy genre in movie history, nor does it understand time travel narratives. And I do think it treats the audience as if they're dummies. For example, there's one scene in the movie, there's a lot of scenes like this, where you see a masked man fight the protagonist this man's dressed all in black and you can't see who it is well if you know it's a time travel movie you got a pretty good guess as to who this mysterious man fighting the protagonist is and the movie treats it as if it's a big surprise there are several scenes like that in the movie and i just want to go really and there are some cliches in this movie there's a russian oligarch played by kenneth branagh he's just a mean guy with a mean streak and he's a weapons dealer I don't think I've ever seen a Russian oligarch be a mean weapons dealer in a movie before. 
Also, there's a countdown clock at the end, and I like countdown clocks sometimes. Mission Impossible Fallout, great, fun movie, and I think that's what Tenet is trying to be. Uh, it uses a countdown clock, which is fine. I don't mind cliches as long as they're used for the service of fun, and good movies know that they're playing around with cliches, whereas bad movies, unfortunately, like Tenet, just use cliches, and that's what the countdown clock at the end of this movie is doing. So for all of those reasons, and I'm sorry to disagree with all the fanboys and other people who love this movie, and I'm glad you do, I'm just giving this a star and a half out of five. That's below average for me. I do not recommend going to see it. Watch all of other Nolan's movies and Primer and <laughs> all the other fun time travel movies that there are, but this one, I'm sorry to say, is skippable. Have you seen Tenant? What do you think about it? Do you think I'm wrong? Let us know in the comments. Be kind, but let us know why I'm wrong and your reasons for liking it, if indeed you liked it. Well, please subscribe to this channel for more great movie content, my What Makes This Movie Great series, my analysis of shot-by-shot -shot scenes in movies, all kinds of other great stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.